Hello, my name is Marloes Mull and I'm an associate professor at IEG Delft. Today I'm going to discuss practical solutions for improving water productivity. With increasing demand for food production, there's an increasing pressure on the available land and water resources. With expanding agricultural areas becoming less viable, the focus is shifting to increasing the efficiency of the existing agricultural lands through improving its productivity in terms of increasing yield per area. One of the main inputs needed to increase this productivity is water, which is also a scarce resource. The concept of water use efficiency, especially in irrigation systems, has also become an important concept to illustrate the importance for making water as much available to evapotranspiration from the water applied, from reducing transmission losses from the point of diversion to the field, as well as applying the right amount of water and thereby reducing surface runoff and percolation. In recent decades, the concept of water productivity has gained traction, which tries to combine the two concepts, integrating the beneficial aspects of water use. In this presentation, I will focus on ways to improve water productivity. Water productivity is defined as the output derived from the use of water, which can be in terms of biophysical quantities, such as tons or kilos of biomass or yield, or socioeconomic indicators, such as jobs or economic value divided by the water consumed per unit of output. In this video, we will be using the vapor definition of gross water productivity, which can be directly obtained from the vapor database, defined as the biomass production over evapotranspiration. Improving water productivity focuses on both parts of the equation, increasing production in the form of biomass production or yield, or by reducing the water used or consumed through evapotranspiration. The first step to be able to identify what can be done to improve water productivity is to scan the system for spatial and temporal variations of water and land productivity. This can be easily done using the vapor database and the standardized protocols developed using Python. The next step is the diagnostics, understanding the reason behind these land and water productivity variations. There are various ways to diagnose the underlying reasons for the variations through field surveys, especially targeting the best and worst performing areas, you can get a better understanding of the underlying reasons for the variations and possible interventions to improve the low performing areas. This is a time consuming activity, but can provide detailed information on the status of the different fields. On the other hand, more remote sensing based products are becoming available, which can be used together with the scan to identi identify some of the underlying reasons. This approach can be used relatively easy for large scale assessments and can be used for time series analysis. For detailed field assessments, crop growth modeling can be a good tool, not only get a good idea of the stress factors, but also to be able to assess the impact of the interventions. However, setting up a crop growth model requires a lot of field based information and can only be set up one field at a time. The final step is to link the understanding of the limiting factors to identify interventions that can address the di diagnosed causes. At each of these steps, it's important to engage with the stakeholders, from awareness raising to confirm the challenges as identified through the diagnostics to discussing the next step to improve water productivity. In this presentation, we focus on improving the vapor definition of water productivity which can be observed using remote sensing defined as the remote biomass production over evapotranspiration. I will look into the two components of the equation and go through typical interventions that can either improve water product, biomass production and or uh, reduce the water consumption. I will start with interventions which can improve yield. The first direct way to improve yield is to increase water availability why it's not, not necessarily improves water productivity. As for a single crop, water productivity under similar nutrient and climatic conditions is theoretically the same. Increasing water availability can therefore increase biomass production along the water productivity slope line as illustrated in the figure shown here. Increasing water availability could be beneficial in areas where there's suboptimal water supply which can also be described using the performance indicator of adequacy, defined as the actual evapotranspiration over the crop water requirement. 
As an example of such analysis is presented in the map of Sinevana sugar, sugar estate in Mozambique. Illustrating areas where evapotranspiration is significantly lower than needed, indicating a problem with water availability. Typical intervention areas for improving yield through increasing water availability range from water resources enhancement, so uh, providing storage, making more water available at individual fields through reducing transmission losses through channel uh, canal lining, uh, but also better water management in the field, as well as to improve soil water management through reducing runoff and increasing soil moisture storage. A second way to improve yield can be done through improving water productivity. This way, similar water consumption, higher yield can be produced. As mentioned theoretically, water productivity slope is a linear one under similar nutrient and climate conditions. While climate conditions are out of the scope of our interventions, there are ways to increase the water productivity slopes by influencing the nutrient component or the crop component. Typical intervention areas focus on crop system management from improving seeds to intercropping systems, improving inputs into the field such as improving nutrient conditions, as well as controlling pests and diseases that affect crop production or may cause complete crop failure. On the other side of the equation is the reduction of water consumption. And since we are dealing with evapotranspiration, of which only transpiration contributes to photosynthesis and biomass production, the focus is on increasing the so-called beneficial fraction, defined as a transpiration over total evaporation. An example of the spatial variation of the beneficial fraction for the Sinevana estate in Mozambique is provided here. Typical interventions for reducing non-beneficial evaporation are through improving soil moisture management interventions, such as mulching and conservation tillage. A detailed overview of different interventions and how they improve water productivity can be found in this compendium of approaches available on the WaterPIP project website. While the interventions are presented as standalone solutions, they are and should be implemented as a suite of solutions. Combining solutions may provide incremental benefits. While we are focusing here on the biomass water productivity, selecting the right interventions should also consider societal and economic impact, as well as the environment. To conclude, water productivity improvements can be achieved through improving yield on the one hand or reducing the non-beneficial water consumption on the other hand. Improving yield through providing more water does not necessarily improve water productivity. In combination with other interventions, it can provide incremental benefits, as long as the rate of increasing yield is higher than the rate of increase in water consumption. It also illustrates that although improving water productivity makes a sense, makes the use of water more efficient, it does not mean the total water consumed is reduced. Thank you for listening.